Hey everyone, it's Paul here and I'm super excited today. I'm about to turn my very first resin bowl. Uh, this bowl blank was prepared for me by my friend George Mondriska over at Mondriska Works. And it's a sort of a patchwork quilt look that we're going for here. There's a bunch of one inch square hardwood blocks scattered throughout the blank. Uh, and then there's a, the resin is tinted with a, uh, a chocolate covered mica powder. So I'm gonna do most of the turning with this uh, Easywood Tools negative rake scraper, which just, uh, I swapped out the regular disc for the negative rake disc, and it has this slight little chamfer that makes a huge difference for turning resin. Just gives you, it just makes it really pretty foolproof uh, to, to turn resin with it, and gives you a great surface finish with that. So I'm gonna, let's talk a little bit about what George did to prepare this blank, and then come back and I'll start to do some turning. First thing George did was cut up a bunch of one inch cubes of maple, cherry, walnut, and hickory. Then he put them into a mold, which is really nothing more than a plastic bowl from Walmart. The tape across the top keeps the blocks from floating up in the resin. I'll put links for everything in the description below. Then he mixed enough alumilite deep pour epoxy resin to fill the mold. He was making two blanks, so there are two batches of resin. In the blank that he made for me, he mixed in chocolate colored mica powder. Then he poured the resin into the bowl and placed the molds into a pressure pot. He set the pressure to 45 pounds and let it sit in the pressure pot for six hours. The pressure compresses the bubbles in the resin, making them microscopically small so you can't see them. Then I had to wait for seven days to let the resin fully cure so that it would tolerate the stress of high speed turning. And let me tell you, those were seven long days. That, is, that has removed all of the tool marks. I am amazed at the surface quality that this Easywood negative rate scraper puts on, on the bowl. I'll still sand it, but uh, it's certainly not going to require much sanding work. And then I'm also going to take care of uh, cutting out the recess. All right, I've got it sanded out now to 1500 grit, and I am loving the surface finish on this thing. It's just absolutely uh, smooth as glass. So I'm gonna now remove the tailstock. I left it in place to just keep vibration to an absolute minimum as I was sanding out. I'm gonna remove the tailstock and clean up the bottom a little bit and make my recess. I got that bottom all sanded out and flipped it around. Recess was a really good fit. I've got the tailstock engaged, which you might think is a little overkill on a small bowl like this, but with those jagged edges uh, from the protruding wood chunks, 
I'm going to leave it in place at least until I get that all flattened out um, and it's smooth going from there. Just a progress check. I still have a, a low spot. I need to come down another, oh, I would say eighth of an inch before I'm flush all the way across, but it's getting better and better with each pass uh, and it's cleaning up pretty nice. I'm running at about 900 RPM. as far as I could go with the uh, tailstock in place and I've got that removed and I'm going to just keep scooping it on out everything's going pretty well depth that I want to reach and now I'm just going to try to thin this out a little bit in that bottom corner which is always a little bit uh, tricky uh, but uh, I don't want to go too deep and end up with a funnel uh, I'm in too far for that so I'm just going to take it easy down there smooth that out a little bit and try to remove material in here
All right, I'm going to hit it with a few coats of uh, Minwax Wipe-On Poly, and I'm going to just finish it mostly on the lathe, and then take it off and finish up the bottom.